Uh, I think you don't get um, a theory of discipline without a concept of autonomy. So they're complementary, but probably autonomy, if I were to define it first, um, comes out of a kind of 18th century philosophical tradition about um, uh, ideas about will and, and individuality and freedom. Um, and so I don't think that it's even appropriate to talk about um, anything other than those things, individuals, wills, really as having autonomy. But you can say that the metaphor of disciplinarity itself is a metaphor based on this early philosophical thinking about the individual. So they belong to one another, but they're metaphorically related. They're not, there's no reason for them to exist together. I think you can't ask an individual to define a discipline. Disciplines happen structurally. They're, they belong to institutions and not to individuals. So no, no individual can define a discipline. Um, it's it's a, an arrangement of knowledge around technique and um, method and things like this. So there's no, there's no individual who could define a discipline. Dis disciplines are defined out of a kind of collective set of behaviors. I think professional practice is part of what we might call a discipline. So it's the same. If you're going to talk about a discipline, you're going to have to include all of the all of the reasons why it exists. Um, so insofar as a discipline is presumably charged to make knowledge, um, produce knowledge, um, in the context of a university, the university exists in relationship to the world that it feeds knowledge into, and the profession is used, the profession uses that knowledge, and the profession produces its own knowledge that then feeds back into the academy. So, they're complementary, and actually, in a certain way, the discipline subsumes, subsumes and includes anything that is produced as knowledge within practice. So I don't think that there's a clear distinction there, especially in architecture, where people keep moving back and forth between universities and practices. Their practices are funded by the university. There's no way to make a clear distinction between the two. People do architecture because they're taught to do architecture. People do architecture because they're paid to do architecture. People, I don't know, it's just a practice. It's just one of the things that people do in the world. Um, and as long as people are going to pay you to do it, it's like people pay you to shine shoes, drive cars, draw drawings, do plan check. As long as that exists, there's no crisis. There's fine. We're all good. So I think that there's an idea about discipline that I hear people talking about, which is an idea about some kind of um, pure concepts that belong to architecture and architecture only. And, um, and that the point of doing architecture is to get closer and closer and closer to that. And they call that pure, clear thing the core of the discipline. I know what you're talking about. I hate it. Um, <laughs> it makes me uncomfortable. And it makes me feel as though they believe that there's a kind of universal, unchanging thing at the center that, um, from, that Vitruvius himself was interpreting and trying to get closer to. Alberti, Palladio. Corbusier, Colin Rowe. Oh. Um, but those are just, every one of those individuals wasn't doing what we now impute upon them. They were just doing their work and getting paid for it, hopefully, mostly. Um, and so we have to accept the fact that if we assign that word discipline to what it was that they're doing, that we're telling a lie. And we're, it's a fabrication. And, and, that, and that the point of, of, a, of a discipline as such is to remind ourselves that not to lie. 
um, but to remind ourselves of what we do. In fact, what what are what are we doing? What are, what are our labors? You know, what are our forms of labor? And one of our forms of labor may be to lie. Um, and that that could be an interesting class. Um, <laughs> how to lie, but. I don't want to teach that class. And I think it might be called thesis. <laughs> I think um, we need to start from what we do. We need to start being very specific about the things we do. Um, how, how do we do them? Uh, why do we do them? Who pays for them? Who doesn't pay for them? Um, like, how does power structure knowledge? Um, so if you really want to know what's in crisis, you know, ask yourself not whether architecture is in crisis or disciplines in crisis, but you know, where are the actual political imbroglios, you know, um, and then figure out how to engage in them with what you are already doing. If you're already making grasshopper definitions, figure out what relationship that has to the political imbroglios that you want to get involved in. If you're already making 3D printed models, figure out what that's related to. Who makes the toner? Who makes the, who makes the software? Who makes the machine? Um, who are you engaging with when you do that stuff? Who are the who are the operators of the machinery when you come to it? Who, are or, who have already operated on the machines? Who has already written the software? Who's rewriting the software? Who's updating the software? So I think what should we do is, is just be a lot more honest and a lot more specific about that stuff. And then I think we'll have an, um, an educational structure which won't revolve around lies um, or ideas about truth and purity and clarity. Even the, even the problem of form could be reconstituted because it was always over-associated with these other things, sort of Platonisms. So I would push away from that and, um, and be a lot more dedicated to a kind of observational descriptive mode. Uh, so I think that one of the roles of people like me in the schools is to to reflect on those things and to clarify them not by making them more pure, but by revealing the ways in which they work together and how, they, how, how the force of our techniques actually, um, how, they're, how they're enforcing upon us certain kinds of behavior, certain kinds of comportment, um, certain kinds of dispositions that were just we need to learn how to either make powerful for our own sake or reject. And, and I think we just need to be more honest.